it's come too late to save the club from the disgrace of liquidation. But the old company which ran Rangers has won its big tax battle with Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. The tax tribunal has decided its use of employee benefit trusts was legal. HMRC said it was disappointed and is considering an appeal. This report from STV's chief reporter David Cowan contains flash photography. The big tax case centred on Rangers' use of employee benefit trusts from 2001 to 2010, when a number of players were given tax-free loans. Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs said the loans were actually payments and should have been taxed. The case went to a first-year tax tribunal, and after a 29-day hearing which ended in February, this ruling has been issued. The majority view reflects the argument that the controversial monies received by the employees were not paid to them as their absolute entitlement. Thus, the payments are loans, not earnings, and so are recoverable from the employee or his estate. And that means... There's a lot of detail in there, and we're still mulling over all the detailed findings, but the headline is that in the vast majority of cases, the monies that were given to the players have been determined as being loans, and therefore there was no payway and NI payable, so there was no further tax to be paid by Rangers Football Club. Payments were made when Rangers were owned by Sir David Murray. Tonight, Murray International Holdings said, We are pleased with the judgment, which leaves minimal tax liability and overwhelmingly supports the views collectively and consistently held by our advisors, legal counsel and NIH itself. And the response from the tax man? We are disappointed that we have lost this stage of the court process and we are considering an appeal. It turns out you got something right after all. The tribunal's coming up soon and uh, I'd like to think that, that we, we can win it. It wasn't the big tax case that brought about Rangers' downfall. The old company went into administration because Craig White decided to stop paying taxes in 2011. Would things have turned out differently if this ruling had been issued earlier this year? It doesn't matter. The clock can't be turned back. The big question now is what influence this will have on the SPL's investigation into allegations that Rangers made undisclosed payments to players. That's led to talk of the club being stripped of some of its titles. There's no doubt some of this massive judgment will form part of the case for the defence. We're now joined by Chris Graham from the fans' website, The Rangers Standard, the football and finance expert Neil Patey and the sports writer Graham Spears. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, Neil, you said you hadn't had time to mull it over in the report. You've now had a wee bit more time. Well, yeah. What do we make of today? Well, there's, there is a lot of data on there, but um, as mentioned in the clip, the headlines is that in the vast majority of cases, the payments that were made to the players have been determined to be loans, and they were made at the discretion of the trustees, and therefore Rangers are right not to pay PAY and NI. There are some examples of where apparently they've not fallen strictly within the rules, and there is tax payable, and that will go forward, and that will need to be settled with the revenue between Old Co and uh, HMRC. But nothing like in the level that was being spoken about before? <coughs> not in the level, and also we have to remember that Old Co actually doesn't have much funds available after liquidation, so they, they will only get a, the revenue will only get a small percentage of what is determined is payable. Chris, what, how are Rangers fans feeling tonight? Well, you used the term bittersweet in the report, I think that's accurate. Um, obviously, it would have been nice to have had the result earlier and been able to avoid um, all of the past year, you know, Craig White taking over administration, etc. I think that could have been avoided if we'd had the decision earlier. Um, but I think it's vindication for the club and the fans. You know, I mean, we've been accused. I have to say, Graham is one of the people who, who has accused us in the past, uh, the past year of cheating, of financial doping, etc. That's been shown to be inaccurate. Um, there were terms like uh, integrity and contrition used during the summer as well. I think it would be nice if some people showed a bit of contrition now and apologised for, for basically calling us cheats when we weren't. Rangers vindicated. Yeah. I presume I can reply to that, can okay. I? I've never used the phrase financial doping. And, when, che and, when, cheating. and when cheating, I didn't refer to the big tax case. I was referring to the small tax case and I was referring to the non-payment of tax of, of under Craig White. I've never, ever used the word cheating to describe the big tax case because if you were sensible you would await until the outcome. So in debates on Twitter, I've had plenty of debates about the, the years of, of, of tax avoidance, which was the Weeds tax case. But that's by the by, it's, it's a victory for Rangers. Um, and vindicated. A, oh, absolutely. But Well, it's, it's a complicated uh, judgment tonight. I've waded through some of it. I think you have as well. I mean, we were saying earlier, it's not a, an uncomplicated um, saga. And some of the evidence took a lot of sifting and the, the jury was um, split two to one, but two in favour of Rangers. So there's no argument it's a, a vindication for Rangers, absolutely.
we spoke uh, earlier on this evening to the former chairman of Rangers, Alistair Johnson, and, and asked him uh, if, if the decision had come earlier, before Chris White's involvement, uh, what would this have meant uh, for Craig White, I beg your pardon, for Craig White's involvement? What would, this, uh, would things have been different? And here's what he had to say. We would not have gone through the administration and liquidation process for sure. If you will actually wind the clock back to um, the uh, uh, the alternatives that the bank and uh, and uh, Murray Holdings had with respect to alternatives, um, the big hang up was the contingent liability with this massive tax liability, a contingent liability hanging over our heads. So how does that make you feel, Chris, hearing that this could all have been avoided? Yeah, it's obviously very disappointing from that aspect. I mean, you know, it's quite clear it could have been avoided. I think at the time that Craig White uh, took over, there were other alternatives uh, to buy the club. The only stipulation was that the liability wasn't included in the purchase. Um, it would have been obviously much better for the club, for the fans <coughs> and for everybody else, and I think for the whole of Scottish football if that had been what happened. But uh, we can't turn back the clock now, so I think we just have to get on with it and we have to accept that it's been a good day from the point of view of the victory. I mean, why did it take so long? Well, it's complicated. Um, there are lots of sub-trusts involved. It's not just one trust, it's sub-trust with many different players and employees involved, so lots of paperwork to go through. And I think the fact that it was a two-to-one decision and not unanimous, it was not clear, and I'm sure there was some discussion between the panel members as to maybe trying to get to a majority decision. So I can understand why it has taken a long time. Um, but there are still millions of pounds owed in tax, whoever it is that has to pay it, is that correct? Well, we don't have the precise figures. The document doesn't stipulate how many have been have gone against Rangers Oco and how much is payable. But whatever is payable is payable by, by Oco. And as I say, under Duff and Phelps' estimation, there might only be a million pounds or less under the liquidation scenario. So actually, even if there's a lot of tax payable, there's only a million available to all the creditors, including HMRC. Graham, we spoke to um, Charles Green, you mm -hmm. uh, this evening, and he said to us that the unfounded myth by a vocal lobby that Rangers had cheated before the verdict has caused division in Scottish football. Is that fair comment? Well, I, I'm not sure about that. I mean, Charles Green is given to excitable pronouncements. It wasn't the media or any lynch mob going after Rangers. It was HMRC, our government's inspectors of taxes. We assume these guys know what they're talking about. And Neil has just said it's a very complicated case. They thought they were due tens of millions of pounds in unpaid taxes. We're hardly going to turn around to HMRC and say, you guys don't know what you're talking about, because even the, the judges on the tribunal have, have been split by it. So I think we just have to wait. If HMRC were claiming they were due back taxes, wait and see the outcome. We now have the outcome. Rangers have conceded they should have paid tax in the small tax case, and we know what happened under Craig White. So <clears throat> if there had been no liquidation, that tax would still be standing, but it's a dead debt now, it's irrelevant now, because the, the old co are dead. So. I think it was quite clear that there was a media agenda in certain quarters to, to, to try to portray the club as having been guilty of, of the, the big tax case. You know, Graham can say that it was about a small tax case, but it quite clearly wasn't in many cases. And I think that the, the idea that Rangers owed this huge tax bill was what drove a lot of the actions of the SPL, you know, all the fans that said that the no to new co thing during administration, that was all based on Rangers owe 90 million, 100 million, all this kind of hyperbole of how much money was owed before the decision was actually well, taken. And a, lot people, some of that. and a lot of people did jump the gun, you know, and there's no doubt about that. Well, we're talking about the SPL, uh, go back to former chairman Alistair Johnson, mm. uh, and this is what he had to say <coughs> on the SPL investigation to Rangers. If indeed there was any culpability, um, it would have been not furnishing the information pertaining to a second contract, um, if there if it indeed was one. What this decision does is it, um, it, it totally removes any obligation that the club uh, would have had to submit these contracts to the SFA or the SPL because they would not have been considered uh, contracts for participation at, 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 at football. The whole concept of Rangers being stripped of titles should go away and go away quickly. Yeah, that, that might be actually some relief for the SPL to Yeah, that. I've never been, in terms of stripping of titles, I've never advocated that. I think it's a ludicrous idea to go back and delete history or rewrite history. So I've never been into that. Alistair Johnson's probably got a point, but the SPL, they'll have to make a decision about their rules of disclosure, which was different from what uh, this tribunal was talking about. They either stick by it and, and you know, interrogate Rangers on, on disclosure, or they let it go by the, by, the, by the wayside. The main thing for me is, if you're a Rangers fan, the thing that would really make you irate is this altered the course of history with Rangers. Mm. Rangers would not have, the old, the old, old co-Rangers would not have disintegrated had this case taken so long. 
or if it had been heard earlier, say a year ago, or if, if HMRC had never pursued it at all. But HR, HMRC made the decision they thought there was a kosher case for reclaiming tax. I think the SPL should drop the investigation now. It's, it's been quite clear from the, the ruling today that the payments are treated as loans. The whole basis of their argument was the payments were not loans. Um, I, you know, I know that people will continue to try to push for that to happen. I know that there's certain people in the SPL who would like to see a strip of titles. I'm quite sure that they'll try to continue on with that. But I think the agenda becomes even clearer if they push on with it from this point onwards. And Neil, just for clarity, is there any effect on the new call from today's... Outside of the SPL investigation, no. Any taxes that were payable or not payable, it was all for the old co. So new co had left that behind us. The only ongoing impact could be whether the SPL continued to pursue the case and whether this judgment will influence the SPL's next decision. Neil, Chris, Graham, thanks very much indeed for that. But still to come, a destination.